In this video, we're going to talk about the FTSE 250. It's UK's second index, otherwise known as the mid cap index. Stay tuned. Hey traders, very warm welcome to so five minute guide, maybe six minute guide to the FTSE 250. Let's go. So FTSE 250 is the Financial Times Stock Exchange 250 index. And what that broadly means, it's the 101st company, so the FTSE 100 is the top 100 companies. The FTSE 250 is the next 250 companies. So it takes it from the 101st to the 350 biggest listed companies in the UK. It's known as the mid cap index because it's not the large cap or the as it uh, or super high cap as the uh, FTSE 100 is. It's the sort of medium shares. It's the it's the companies that are more domestic based. They're not doing business, much business abroad. It's a, a considered more of a barometer of the UK's economy than perhaps the FTSE 100. Now there are some investment trusts in there as well, but most of it is companies. Now one thing to say is the FTSE 350 is not the next 350 after that. The FTSE 350 is the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250 combined together. But the FTSE 250 is that mid cap index. Let's look a little bit closer about what it's all about. So it's more domestic based starting in 1984. It's much more sensitive to UK uh, economic data. Uh, no, it's not much more sensitive. It is sensitive to UK economic data, sensitive to obviously interest rates, sensitive to because they're going to import which will affect the pounds and they want to import things, uh, manufacture or if they want to kind of export things. Uh, let's have a look at some of the constituents as well. Um, here's the chart, by the way, it's a five year chart. Uh, you can see the range is pretty high on it. You know, it's quite a big moving index. It's high price, it's up in the 20,000s or 19,000s as I'm doing this. Um, video um, one day range is 100 points is, is, is normally the range a little bit more a little bit less than the volatility it can be quite a volatile index because of the high price nature of it because of the amount of constituents in it because there's less liquidity in each of these constituents and I've got this web page here with some of the constituents in now the reason it's a little bit more volatile is that the liquidity on the buy and offer side of each individual stock is going to be less so in times of like heavy selling or heavy buying you're going to get more broader moves than you will with some of the larger caps like the FTSE 100 where it's very thick you know there's a lot of little buyers a lot of sellers so you know a big buyer's not going to move it a lot whereas a big buyer coming or a big seller coming into one of these companies is going to move it a lot now it's worth noting that there's not actually that heavy weighting on each. They are weighted by market cap, but there's 250 companies and there's such a broad kind of array of companies in here. Look, if you just scan through some of these, we've got AAA Holdings, which is the, unlike Casino. Um, you know, we've got well, we've got Auto Trader Group, we've got Balfour BT, we've got um, Big Yellow. You know, some of these are very familiar with you, some of these won't. Britvic, which is oh, must be ADR. We've got Card Factory. We've got uh, dairy, you know, you can just see a uh, massive, massive selection. But you know, UK companies that are not massive, huge multinational, international companies, but they're more domestic based. Yes, they're doing business abroad, but you know, Greg's they're selling pasties on you know retail shops on the street. You know, there are a, a solid mid cap company, and it's full of them. That's the whole point of it. It's full of them. It's a good exposure to that kind of thing. Um, in terms of trading it, it's a widespread, guys. It's not really for day trading unless it's very, very active. Not many providers offer it, to be honest with you. Um, the ones that do the spreads are kind of 30, 40 points. Um, purely because there's not much liquidity there. It's not a very popular index. Um, you know, it's a kind of thing that isn't traded very frequently during the day. It's more something will come or buy it for multi-month, multi-year period holding as part of an investment strategy into the UK. Correlations, um, of course, there's some correlation to FTSE 100 companies, but interestingly, that breaks quite a lot because you'll find that you know FTSE 100 companies are doing a lot of business abroad, so there's a different sensitivity to the uh, to the exchange rate with sterling, uh, as in the UK, as in the FTSE 250 companies. Uh, you're going to find this correlation breaks quite a lot as well. <clears throat> 
you're going to find this correlated to and there'll be some correlation to the european indices like the dax the cac the euro stocks but it's really its own thing it's an interesting kind of uh, instrument to trade and to get involved in it's not for day trading really just because the spread is too big it, it, it doesn't make any sense it's such a wide spread you might find opportunities there occasionally but for a multi kind of day multi-week hold um, it's more of a trending market. It's going to trend in one direction because you've got so many stocks in there. Um, then it's just going to, you're not going to get one or two individual stocks that are causing it to, to move in one direction. It has to be the whole kind of wave or tide, if you like, that's moving it back and forth, back and forth. Like I say, pitfalls and caution, not really intraday, intraday trading vehicle, a bit more volatile, so being cautious of that. Um, but, you know, it's it's popular and it makes sense as well. It's a kind of, perhaps you can use it as a pair trading strategy. So perhaps taking, um, you know, the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250. So, you know, shorting the FTSE 250, um, going long the FTSE 100 or vice versa to kind of strip out that, uh, you know, foreign influence or whatever, you know, whatever strategy you come up with. It's very popular for doing that kind of thing. And as I say, how it trades intraday, reasonably volatile when it's going, quite a big range, you know, 100 points, 200 points, not unknown, but there's a big spread there. So, you know, it, it's pros and cons with that. So that's a FTSE 250, guys, FTSE 250 mid cap index. It's a decent index to look at, quite an interesting one to watch. Not really intraday, not really an intraday trading vehicle, but um, a good one to have on the books to keep an eye out for and scan for, nevertheless. Stay tuned for the next video. Take care. Bye bye.